Some friends of mine bought me this as a housewarming gift. Yes, that's right. It's a crock pot instant pot. So these are all the rage. It's basically a crock pot slow cooker, but it can do pressure cooking so it's fast. So I thought I would show you my beef stew recipe. Okay, so we're going to make this using one potato, a couple of carrots, and a wee bit of onion, and also some meat. So I'm using black Angus chop suey cut for the meat. Uh, they also have beef stew uh, cut at my grocery store, but I like the chop suey because it's actually cut up the way that you'd want it to be. It just saves a little bit of time. Actually, I think I'll just start with that. So it's already chopped up, but I'm just going to give it a few more chops. Just going to chop this up. I'm going to chop things in different thicknesses. The Instant Pot definitely can cook very, well, not instantly, but very quickly. But these vegetables will cook, you know, they cook differently. So the carrots, we'll make those a little thinner because those take longer to cook. The potato is really starchy, so it's easy to kind of destroy it in the Instant Pot. Uh, it'll basically turn into like mashed potatoes. So for the potato, I'm not gonna go super small with the slices. I'm going to basically have larger chunks so they don't cook down as far. So I'm just making one serving of beef stew, so I probably won't even use this whole potato. Okay, now a little bit of onion. So when we were growing up, my mom put onion in everything. It was ridiculous, I think, because she could grow them in the garden and they were basically free. So my sister and I kind of, I don't want to say hate onions, but, you know, we have a strong memory of it. But they're still good for flavor. I think the thing that my mom did wrong was that she never bothered to dice it up. She would just have like these big chunks of onion and everything, which was really kind of lazy. But you want to dice it up fine because that increases the surface area of the piece, allowing more of the flavor to be transmitted into your recipe. Okay, yeah, so uh, pretty basic. We just have a little bit of onion, some carrots, some potatoes, and some black Angus. Okay, just gonna do a little bit of olive oil. That's probably enough. Okay, so one nice feature of this thing is there's a brown saute mode. So we can go into that mode and basically you just heat up the chamber and we can use that to brown the meat. A few drops of water. Oh yeah, it's ready. All right, let's put in our meat. I don't wanna go over over the browning, just enough to give it a good seal, and then I'll turn off the, uh, the saute mode. I'm just gonna throw the potatoes in there and the carrots right now. This is actually a good way to bring down the temperature. See that? All of the sizzling's going away. Bring down the temperature so the meat doesn't get too, uh, too browned until we actually wanna start cooking. Got the carrots. Oh yeah. See, just spread that heat around. It's important when you're cooking to think about thermal conductivity. You know, like the mediums that actually transmit the heat from your stove to the food, be it air or uh, oil or water. Okay, I'm going to use some unsalted beef stock. Now that doesn't mean there isn't salt. It just means there isn't salt added. So if you drank this whole thing, that would be four times five, 20% of your daily salt intake. Of course, we're probably only gonna use about a quarter of this. Now, if you compare that to a can of beef stew, <laughs> if you eat one can of beef stew, it's something like 75% so of your daily salt intake. So no matter what we do here, it's not gonna be as salty as canned food. So what I like to do is, just put in enough broth that it's roughly at the same level as the components. See that? That's probably good, just like that. Now we're at the seasoning step. So as I mentioned, you kind of can't over-season this. I know that sounds silly, but... So I've got some uh, Mrs. Dash. 
So yeah, just dump it in there. It's a good salt substitute. This stuff's good. Wondamus. It's kind of a, uh, it's kind of like Tony Cashery's, but very little salt. This is actually made uh, in Wisconsin. I actually used to work with the guy that made this stuff when I was a graphic artist. His name was Tud Bowden. We didn't get along really that well, but I ran into him decades later at a street dance. And he's like, I never thought I'd see you again, Ben. And then he was selling the Wondamus. <laughs> His band was selling it on stage. So I got some, uh, basically some peppercorns. Oh yeah, this is gonna be really peppery. Yeah, look at all those spices. See that, it looks like it's too much, but nope. This is the key to making it good. So I'm gonna put in some salt. Not a whole lot though. No matter what, this will have far less salt than any prepackaged canned good. And I'm gonna put in some oregano, not a whole lot. Cool, maybe a little additional garlic powder. Maybe just like a little splash of Worcester sauce. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, if I had some malt vinegar, I might put that in as well, but I do not. All right, let's stir it up. So a lot of recipes call for tomato paste. I have tried that. I found that it made it a little too acidic for my taste. Cool, all right, so I'm just gonna get everything kind of leveled off. Okay, the Instant Pot has like this uh, cool, like space engineered looking lid. It actually has a vent and also a uh, pressure control so you can't open it if it's under pressure. So we're gonna put it there and lock it in place. This part's important, this is the steam release valve. And it's kind of dumb because it's uh, has a pictograph. Uh, no steam and then I guess steam. Uh, yeah, so you actually have to turn this to the no steam side. It would be nice if it said seal vent, but oh my gosh, then you'd have to have different languages on it for different countries instead of pictures, even though it's got English right there. There's a setting for meat slash stew. 35 minutes is way too much for this portion. 20 should be more than sufficient. It's gonna be high pressure, so yeah, good. Let's hit start. So this thing is kind of like a 3D printer <laughs> in a way. It takes a good amount of time just to heat itself up before it actually does anything. So it's gonna be heating for probably about eight minutes before it actually starts. So once it gets up to temperature, then it starts the countdown from 20 minutes down to zero. You wanna make sure you don't have anything above the vent. You know, you don't wanna like warp wood or blinds or something. So I, I try to keep this fairly clear above it. I guess you could maybe put a hot air balloon there if you wanted and, you know, recycle the steam. It's starting to hiss. I don't know why I'm whispering. I think we should let this stew for a while. Oh, there we go. We're up to temperature. It's clearly boiling inside. And now it's the 20 minute countdown. Oh boy, it's done. Now it's time to release the steam. They say you should let it sit for another 10 minutes to let it, I don't know, stew more, but I really haven't seen any benefit to that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Oh no, my life! All right, this should allow us to open it now. Yeah, here comes the reveal. Oh yeah. Let's take this dull butter knife. Oh yeah, it goes right through the potato. Nice. So the onion should be pretty boiled down. We shouldn't actually see any chunks of onion. I'm just gonna use a scoopy spoon and gonna get most of the big bits. Oh yeah, look at that. Get the big stuff and then I'll drizzle in the broth. Make sure I get all the meat out of here, because that's the expensive part. Okay, I'm just gonna lift the cooking chamber out of the Instant Pot and just put in some of the broth. Actually, we have a pretty good ratio. I don't think we have that much excess broth at all. Lovely brown into the potatoes. We can cut the potatoes with a spoon. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, it's really good and large to show detail. 
Yeah, that's a pretty good broth. Uh, it's not overly oily. It has a lot of spices in it. And it's got a good color. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. We have enough particulate matter in the broth from all the spices and the chopped onions to give it a nice coating texture. Okay, enough filming. I want to eat this. Let's have a carroty, beefy bite here. That's good. The beef might be ever so slightly overcooked. It's not, uh, you know, impossible to chew. Maybe I could have uh, browned it a little shorter. The thing that I like about these seasonings is you have an initial bite from all of the pepper and some of the wondamus, but then you have a sweet aftertaste from the onion. So I think it's important that you're getting the flavor of the onion, not necessarily the crunchy texture of it. I'm just not a big fan of that. Oh yeah, look at that potato, it just comes apart. I like to make it watery so you can like dip in a little bit of bread. Oh yeah, some broth bread, look at that. Mm. These rolls, three for one dollar at the grocery store. You shouldn't speak with your mouth full, Ben. But mom, I just can't stop telling people how delicious this beef stew is. I think I've got my recipe dialed in pretty good. But yeah, the main thing is don't overbrown the meat and then use tons of spices. Way more spices than you think you might need. So there you have it. A simple recipe to make beef stew with an instant pot. Enjoy.